everyone, it's Essie here with a process video for Go Go Getaway and it was my turn to set the challenge for October and I came up with this rainbow inspired mood board. So I had a bit of a technical hitch, as you can see I've already started uh, my project, um, my camera didn't record the first um, part so um, I'm joining, so you're joining me part way through. And I have a cut file, an open cut file, which, which is a floral um, cut file. And I offset it on my silhouette to also cut a solid shape, which will be the background to my cut file. And you'll see how that comes together um, towards the end of the video. For now, I'm creating a rainbow background. I, I cut it on watercolour cardstock and I'm using brushes and also Ken Oliver Colour Burst powders, a combination, I've got a mixture of the two, to create this rainbow colour effect across the background. And I'm just using each colour in turn, um, applying some water with my brush to the watercolour cardstock, sprinkling the powder, spritzing with more water and this is why it was important to use watercolour cardstock because I can use as much water as I need to to move the colour and blend the colour around. Um, you'll see a couple of times I also lift some of the water off, it gets a bit too saturated at one point and I have to lift a lot of the water off to then be able to carry on blending so that I get the rainbow effect that I want because the, the reds and the pinks kind of start blend, merging in together a bit. There you go, I've, I've kind of over, over watered it a little bit. But I keep playing, keep moving the colour around, keep adding the powders until I'm happy with the results. I haven't actually used my uh, brushes for a long while um, and a, a fellow admin in the Facebook group for the love of pretty paper did a quick Facebook live um, using them and, and it inspired me to get them out and have a play and I think I shall probably do more projects with them. I'd forgotten how much fun they are to work with and they're just they're just so great for creating this kind of rainbow effect because they blend so beautifully. And you can, they're really flexible. You can move them around on your page as much as you need to. And I'm just, as you can see, I'm just moving on to the purple now. Starting off with the purple brusho, um, which is being a bit reluctant to come out of the pot. But then you can just see how lovely and gorgeous it is as you spray the water on and the watercolour, the powders react with that water and the colour blends and I've got another sheet of watercolour card underneath which I'm allowing the colour to kind of run and drip onto um, and I may well end up using that as a background for something as well because um, I end up with this lovely kind of uh, rainbow outline. Just using some of the purple uh, colour burst there as well, it's a slightly deeper purple than the brushes, which is kind of why I'm using both shades just to get a contrast of colour. Using my brush still to blend the colour around. I never get tired of watching this process of watching those colours blend and just giving it a bit of a quick blast with my heat gun as well, just to dry off some of the colour so I can continue blending without getting a muddy mess. Just finishing off with the final colours, going to be moving on to my blues. And that is, I think that is the ultramarine brushes. Just adding the adding the water. And here we go, I have finished um, the background. So you can see that I moved on from the blues to a turqu to turquoise and ending up with a darker green. Started off with the lime green that moved into the yellows and have ended with a more turquoisey olive green and there you can see the cut file that I'm going around and applying my glue to using a glue pen so that I can um, really carefully add the glue to the cut shape 
having to work quite quickly. I mean, this has speeded up, obviously, but I did have to work quite quickly because the danger with one of these is that the glue that you put on at the beginning will have dried by the time you got all the way round. Um, so quickly going round and adding that glue. I've made sure that my background is completely dry before I'm start attempting to stick the cut file to it. And just sticking that cut file down and there you can see how the background works through that cut file, adding in a little bit more glue where it's needed. <clears throat> and after this, I've just then need to decide what kind of cardstock I'm going to add a use for my background. So I've decided to go with this black cardstock with white script on and I'm just trimming it down so that I can also have a white border around the edge. I like having a frame to my layouts. So I've decided that's what I'm going to go for. Just going to gut the middle of that white cardstock so that I'm saving some of that cardstock because obviously you don't see that piece. And just put that aside for now and using my tape runner to stick the black cardstock to the white frame. And then I'm going to use uh, sheets of foam. My, I've got lots of scraps of bits of foam that I'm going to apply to my cut file and use that to stick it down onto my layout to give it some dimension and just lift it off the page. And there you go, I've covered it all in those little bits and pieces of scraps and just sitting it down on my layout. So that photograph is of my great niece and it was the one that I chose at the beginning before I started the layout, but I've changed my mind. I actually think it was, um, it got a bit lost. It was, it wasn't black and white, but I'd used an effect on it so that it was not full colour um, and I just thought it was a bit, um, uh, yeah, got a bit lost on the black background. So I've gone for this photograph, which is a group shot of all of my great nieces and nephews at my niece's wedding recently. And it, although it's a full colour photograph, they're all wearing quite neutral colours and the background is quite neutral. So I think it works really well with the bright colours on the layout. I didn't, I thought a black and white photograph would get wouldn't I, I looked at a black and white photograph but didn't like it against the black background so I think this is kind of a good compromise between a full colour photograph with lots of colour in which I didn't want um as so it's all quite neutral so just popping some layers of tissue paper underneath to provide a bit of a softer edge and then using this remember chipboard title for my page and I'm now going to start layering some ephemera and embellishments around my cut file just to kind of bring out the colour out onto the background a little. I toyed with the idea of putting some gesso around the edge under the cut file and then sort of adding a little bit of colour with either the brushes or the gelato or gelatos maybe. Um, but I changed my mind. Um, I wanted to kind of bleed the colour out a little bit onto the background, but I thought I might make a mess of it if I tried that. So I went with the ephemera and stickers option. These flower stickers I've had forever. They must be 15 years old at least. I'm surprised they're still sticky, actually. Well, I'm surprised they came off the backing sheet but they're slightly transparent. So they provide a really soft colour to that background just to bleed out from the die cut, um, providing a pop of colour, but it's not too strong. So I'm just popping those round, matching up the colours where they fall um, with the on the die cut. So carrying on that rainbow effect as much as possible. And I've got some little phrase stickers from Pretty Little Studios here. And those bits of ephemera, the flowers at the top, are from Pretty Little Studios too. And I'm just contemplating that little bit of ephemera that I tucked in the corner there and actually decided that I didn't like it. 
So I've chosen another floral piece to coordinate and just continue that line of yellow and green. And so I'm just sticking that in under the corner there. I fiddle around with this for ages. I think the tissue paper kind of got folded up underneath and I wasn't happy with it. So I do faff around with it for a bit. And then I've added some thread in. This is just embroidery thread, which I wrapped around into a bit of a messy circle. And I've popped some yellow and then I'm also popping some green in under there as well. To add a little bit more detail and just a little bit more continuing that colour down through the page. Just adding the green in there and just leaving it quite messy. Sticking it. And then I've added a little button. Um, it's This is... Um, down in the in the left hand corner at the beginning of the title and I'm just I've added some thread around that as well and I've also added some purple thread around the little purple chipboard pieces just above my title and now just to continue the um, little colour adding some more colour onto the background I've got some of my dye inks this, these are highly swap dye um, spray inks and I'm just splattering little touches of colour around the edges as well. And of course, I also then, once I finish with the inks, I come in with my Nouveau drops and just add drops of colour all the way round, <clears throat> continuing. Oh, I've got some little sticky hearts as well, look. Just adding those on, I'd forgotten about those. Just, I've got some are from some of those little pink ones off from Hey Little Magpie and these are Chamel stickers I've got some from the Glitter Girl and some from Dr Crayon's collection again matching the colours up as they go round and then these are Amy Tangerine Shine On and they've got the perfect purple so just fitting in the perfect the little purple heart there and now I come in with the Nouveau Drops using several different colours all the way round, a little bit more detail, just for some finishing touches. That's me finished, thank you for watching.